Hello? Hey, you! Is this the complaint department? Because I want to complain. You want to complain? <laughs> Look at this shirt. I've only had it a week and the seams are already starting to fall apart. My socks keep falling down. And can you believe I paid $20 for this haircut? I've got this terrible headache. My carpal tunnel is acting up. And I can feel my elbow. I thought you weren't supposed to be able to feel your elbow. What if I bump it on something? Now it's going to hurt. And don't even get me started on people who drive too slow in the fast. Excuse me. Uh, is this the complaint department? This is the virtual complaint department. Which reminds me. One of the most irritating things is when people can't see the obvious. I mean, you're talking to me on a computer monitor, but you started by clicking the complaint department link. Not to mention, you there are literally dozens of complaints spewing out of my mouth, and still you ask, is this the complaint department? Yes, but I'm supposed to complain to you. It's a joke. You know, someone enters the virtual complaint department expecting to complain about something, but then has all these complaints thrown at them? A tables are turned sort of thing? Oh, <laughs> I see. That's actually pretty funny. Well, most people don't think so. Well, complaints are usually attached to emotions, so you probably catch them off guard. Anger. What? Anger is the only emotion attached to complaints. What about frustration? A relative of anger. A relative? Annoyance, irritation, fury, rage, antagonism, resentment, ire, wrath, and frustration. All relatives of anger. No matter how you slice it, people are mad. We have a right to be mad. Take my complaint, for example. Hey, could you do me a favor? Well, I don't think... Could you stay online and watch the complaint department for me while I go get a Diet Pepsi? But I don't work here. Come on, I'll just be a second. I'm dying of thirst. I started licking the water on my screensaver. You can guess how good that is. But I wouldn't know what to do. There's nothing to it. You just sit there, look into your camera, somebody comes online, and you listen to their complaint. I don't know. I came here to complain, and now- You can do it! You're great with people! I am? Sure, you are great with me. And you look really good on camera. But I can't be in charge of an entire department. The link says complaint department, but they really just mean this chat room. Thanks so much. I'll be back in a gif. Is there a PDF form we fill out or anything? Excuse me, is this the complaint department? Uh, uh, no. No, it isn't. But the link said complaint department. Oh, um, yes. Sorry, I actually meant to say yes. It is. Um, see? My shirt is only a week old and the seams are already falling apart. I don't know what you're talking about, but I wish to register a complaint. Okay, okay. What seems to be the problem? This right here is the problem. Is that goo? No, it is not goo. They changed my favorite cookie. After years and years of creating, producing, and selling the perfect cookie, they changed it, and I do not like the change. It looked like goo. It's not goo. It's part of the cookie I do not like. That doesn't look like a cookie. I told you, it's not the cookie. It's part of the cookie. The part of the cookie you don't like. Exactly. May I ask what kind of cookie it is? I don't know what kind of cookie it is. Now they've changed it. But it used to be the perfect blend between the rudimentary flavors. Two delightfully crunchy and perfectly corpulent chocolate discs surrounding a wondrous vanilla cream ice cream creating a sandwich style confectionery with the impeccable aptitude for immersing a bovine liquid refreshment. An Oreo! In a nutshell, as everyone knows, the Oreo used to be the perfect cookie to cream ratio as a 71% cookie and a 29% cream, creating a pick Mary from the re residents of the recompromise after one's ultimate demise. Uh, heavenly flavor? Exactly. Now the ratio of cream has changed from 29% to 58%. I've had to scrape off half of my cookie to enjoy my beloved cookie. 29 to 58? Oh, I see. You bought the double stuff. Double stuff? Yeah, 
They came out with the double stuffed the Oreos. Thing. That was several years ago. In the church. But you can still get the, the regular kind. Yeah. I can't? Take that out. Yeah, just read the package. There are other flavors, too. Golden vanilla, Neapolitan, mint, birthday cake, banana split, peanut butter, and of course, double stuffed. I guess I should have read the package. What am I supposed to do with all this extra icing? Save it. Maybe they'll come up with a just perfectly corpulent chocolate discs flavor. Wouldn't that be something? Hey, could you do me a favor? Could you watch the compa complaint department for just a sec? I have a sudden craving. No, I will not. I wouldn't even know what to do. Here. I'm sending you the online PDF forms for the complaint department now. I'll be right back. Excuse me? You dumb imbecile! Excuse me? I brought a brand new 70 Forge high definition flat screen TV from you not a week ago, and now it's not working. You didn't buy it from me. Well, not you specifically, but from your online store. And I want to know what you're going to do about it. Well, let's see. I'm sure there's something. Aha! Here we are. Television complaint form. Let's go down the list and see if we can rectify the problem. Fine. And sorry about the insult when I came online. Sometimes I get a little carried away. Apology accepted. Number one. What seems to be the problem? I was watching my favorite program, World's Dumbest Imbeciles, when all of a sudden, the screen went dark. Dark screen, dark screen. Ah, here it is. Was there a number on the screen, like a channel number or a cable provider logo? Nope. It was completely dark. No number, no logo, no picture whatsoever. Let's see. Did you try the on button? Of course I tried the on button. That's the first thing I tried. Then I tried every other button and still nothing. Hmm. Did you check the cables connected to the back of the TV? That's the next thing I did. I checked every cable on the back of the TV. You know, there's a lot of cables. I got cables going to the cable box, cables going to the DVD player, cables going through my kid's gaming system, a cable going to the modem, but I made sure each one of them was secure. Then I tried the on button again, the on button on the TV, the on button on the remote, and still nothing. Okay, next there's a big thick cord on the back of the TV that needs to be plugged into the wall. Did you make sure it's plugged in? The problem with that is that the TV is on top of a big dresser, and the plug is behind the dresser, and the dresser is, it's really close to the wall. How close? Uh, about three to four inches away from the wall. That should be enough space for you to look and at least see if it's plugged in. Normally, yes, but right now, it's really dark back there. Can you use the flashlight on your phone? No, I'm using my phone to talk to you. Duh. Well, it's kind of dark on your screen. Why is it so dark? The lights are off. Why don't you turn the lights on? Because right now, on our side of town, there's a power outage. I see. Delete. Delete. Do you, do you still the original packing the TV came in? I always keep the boxes. Here's what I want you to do. Pack up TV in the original packing and mail it back to us. It's that bad, huh? I'm afraid so. There's an online formula to fill out, and it asks you why you're returning it. Just say there's nothing wrong with the TV. It's just that you're stu too stupid to own a television. I am? Most definitely. But you're actually perfect for this job. Can you watch the complaint department? I'll be right back. Uh, I guess so. There's nothing good on anyway. Is there anyone here? Hello? Hello? Ah! Ah! Oh, I'm extremely sorry. I thought you were someone else. Oh, oh good. For a moment there, I thought you were, you know, quite mad. Oh, no, no. I was just expecting someone else. Can I help you? This is the complaint department, is it? Virtual complaint department. Can I help you? Yes, thank you. I came here to complain about... I'm sorry. It's just that, who were you expecting? I'm sorry? That mask. You were expecting to jump out at someone else. Who is it? Oh, actually, I'm not allowed to tell you. Why not? It's 
private. You wouldn't know who the person was anyway. I might. And the way you jumped out doesn't seem very private. Who is it? I'm sorry, but that's between the person whose name I shall not be mentioning and the complaint department. It's a private message. It's for that person and that person only. Can I help you? I already know the message. It's raw. That's only half the message. Did you wish to register a complaint or not? Yes, but not to you. I wish to complain to someone else. I assure you, I'm perfectly capable of assisting you with whatever your grievance might be. No, I find you rude and very annoying. Fine, I'll find you another associate. Hello? Can I help you? Nope, no, you just put on a different hat. No! I'm a completely different person. No, no, no. I don't want you. You're terrible. I suppose you could do better. A slug could do better. A slug? Fine. Prove it. Excuse me, where do you think you're going? Is this the complaint department? Uh, yes, but I'm afraid the attendant has... Oh, uh, I see. I have to... Perhaps I can help you. Oh, great, because I'm at my wit's end. I don't even know what to do anymore. What seems to be the problem? I think my husband is going deaf. My, that's a problem. And what makes you think he's losing his hearing? He doesn't answer me half the time. I have to call him several times before I get any response. It seems like the only time he can actually hear me is when we're standing face to face and he can see my lips move. Let I see. Let's try an experiment. Do you both have mobile phones? Sure. I make sure he has it set to ring and vibrate to make sure he answers. Here's what I want you to do. Call his phone and when he answers, I want you to talk really softly. If there's no response, talk a little louder. And if there's still no response, talk a little louder and so on until you finally get an answer. Sounds reasonable. It's raining. Hello, honey. No response. Hello, sweetheart, are you there? Still no response. Hello, sweetheart, can you hear me? He cannot hear me. He never answers me. What's his number? I'll call him. Good idea. I'd like to have another witness to make sure he goes in for a hearing test. 555-4529. Hello? Is anyone there? Oh, hi. I'm calling on behalf of your wife. Yes. She's right here. Yes. I can. Right. I'll let her know. Okay. Bye-bye. He could hear you? Yes, he could. What did he say? He said that he answered you three times and wants to know what you want. He says you always do that to him. Oh. I wonder what that means. Hey, could you watch the complaint department for me just for a sec? What? I didn't hear you. Thanks. I'll be right back. So, what do you think I should do? Hello. I'd like to register a complaint. Hello? Hey. Oh, hello. I'd like to register a complaint. At the moment, I'm afraid there's no one here to complain to. You're here, aren't you? Yes, but... Oh, what is your complaint? My bill is wrong. It seems to be in order. No, look at the price of the cheese. Ah, here it is, Jarlsberg. That's a good cheese. Yes, but the price is wrong. Let's see. They charged you eight fifty nine a pound. An excellent bargain for such a high quality cheese. Exactly, but the price online says ten dollars forty three cents per pound. So they charged me the wrong price. But. They only charged you $8.59 a pound. 
I don't think they were trying to swindle you. Nevertheless, it is still incorrect. Ah, I think I found the problem. You see, it's in the online grocery store department. Starting today, Jarlsberg cheese is $8.59 a pound. They simply gave you the sale price early. That may be, but when I bought it, the price was $10.43 per pound. I demand a correction. Well, the customer is always correct. Let's see. You bought two pounds and paid $17.18. And the old price was $10.43 times two, which is $20.86 for a difference of $3.88. So you owe an additional $3.88. What about sales tax and shipping? Times point zero six equals twenty two cents for a grand total of three dollars and eighty eight cents. What about the cost of the plastic wrapping around the cheese? That's already included in the price, but I can see your insistence, so two and a half cents for that. The Jarlsberg name sticker. Uh, three-fourths of a cent for that. The nutritional information label. 0.25 cents for that. The cow flattened reduction injections. You don't think I forgot about those, now did you? No. We were trying to keep that a secret, but another eight and a half cents. And to compensate for your time, 98 cents. Is there a tax on your time? No, no, no. No tax on customer service. Oh, thank goodness. At least there's a bright spot. It seems like there is such a surcharge on everything these days. So, how much is the damage? $4.98. You can pay by credit card or over the phone or online. I'm afraid I haven't any money. That's all right. You can work it off in the complaint department for the next two minutes. Is this the complaint department? At least for the next two minutes. I've been trying to call the Army Surplus Store for two days now, and the line seems to be disconnected. What number did you call? I wrote it down on my hand. 0900-1700. That doesn't sound like a real number. I wrote it down exactly as they had it on the door. Was it on a sign under the word open? Why, yes. That's another thing. The sign said open, but the door was locked. That's their operating hours. It's military time. It means they're open from 0900 to 1700 hours. What time is 1700 hours? Five. Clock? Yes. Here. Here is the number for the Army Surplus Customer Service. Their phone lines are open 24 hours a day, 7 days a week. Is that Eastern or Pacific time? Daylight savings time. I can't call anyway. My phone is damaged. It looks like it's off. How do I turn it on? Just push any button. That's what everyone keeps telling me, but there isn't one. I can see several buttons. Yes, there's a volume button, a back button, a home button, and a settings button. I've looked at every square millimeter on this phone, and believe me, there is no any button. Looks like there's water damage on it. I don't see how that's possible. I've kept it in this jacket pocket through two washings. You washed your jacket? Put the phone in the pocket. Yes, but as you can see on the tag, the pockets are waterproof. <sighs> okay, that's two minutes. I've done with my time. Good luck with that. So I just wait here then? Is this where I can complain about my parents? Well, if you want to. Good, because they are a real pain in the butt. Is that so? 
Are they super old and senile, and you have to take care of them? No, they're just unreasonable. They have all these rules, and I have to follow them, or else there'll be consequences. Consequences. Nasty things those are. Tell me about it. But get this. My dad thinks there are good consequences. Good consequences? Like what? Take the other day, for example. I wanted some cake, so instead of just baking one, my mom shows me the instructions on the back of the cake mix box and says, follow these instructions. But because of the way our oven heats and the climate we live in, cook the cake seven minutes less than what it says on the box. And did you? Oh, yeah. She made me do it all by myself. She just stood there and answered a few questions. Was she right about the seven minutes? Yeah. The cake turned out extremely moist and delicious. So my dad says, nice work. This is a delightful consequence of following the instructions. A strange way to put it, but I suppose that is a good consequence. But then comes the bad consequences. In order to make the cake, I had to use several dishes, pans, and utensils. Naturally. Get this. They made me wash the dishes. So you're like the little red hen. Exactly. I had to make it and do all the cleanup. And then they just want you to eat all the fruits of your labor. Oh no, they're diabetic. They couldn't have any. I see. And did you purchase the cake mix? Of course not. My parents buy all the food. But they don't eat cake. No, but I do. So, basically, you want your parents to buy your food, fix your food, and clean up the mess for you while you just eat it? Finally, someone gets it. Why don't my parents get it? Oh, they get it. Is this the complaint department? Can you help me with this person? Me? You want me to? You can do it. I'll be right back. What is your complaint? My arm hurts. Well, I'm not a doctor, but I'll take a look. I'm sick of doctors. I fell out of a tree. Uh, I need to look at the other arm. Why? Because it's injured. No, this is the one that hurts. Then why does that one have all those bandages? To stop the blood. So it is hurt. No, this is the one that hurts. Clearly that one has multiple wounds, and the one without the bandages looks perfectly fine. Instead of the complaint department, I think you need to see a psychiatrist. Oh, I'm sorry. I should have explained. A long time ago, this arm suffered a very rare nerve injury, which resulted in the complete lack of this arm's ability to feel any pain. Really? I've never heard of that. It's extremely rare. It's sort of like a super ca extreme case of carpal tunnel. But it's true. Watch this. Oh my, yes. Thank you. Thank you for the demonstration. I believe you. Here, you try. Go on, have a bite. Oh, yeah, you're on that side of the screen. It's not necessary anyway. Then I'll give it a good karate chop. <sighs> no, no, please stop. You'll get blood everywhere. Sorry, I just get carried away sometimes. Now, if this is the if this is not the arm that hurts, then how did you get all those injuries? Well, all these band-aids on my fingers I got while chopping onions. That always happens. This one on my wrist I got from this jagged stripes you tear off the saran wrap with. This one I got from a pincushion. This one is more of a burn. And this one, believe it or not, I got from a whack-a-mole machine at Chuck E. Cheese. May I take a look? You need to go to the hospital. That's a gaping wound. It doesn't hurt. That doesn't matter. It needs stitches. If you don't get that sewn up, it'll only get worse. You'll lose more blood. You'll have more nerve damage. It'll eventually get infected, and you'll lose your arm, or worse. But it doesn't hurt. Pain is an indicator that there's something wrong. You don't have that indicator, but believe me, there is something wrong. I'm going to go get you some help. But... This is the arm that hurts. Excuse me, why are you wearing a mask? I'm a cat burglar. I see. Can I help you? I'm bored. See this? I burgled it. That's not cool. Do you need a letter opener or something? No, letter openers are for wimps. Who can't just rip open an envelope? It's only paper. I like letter openers. In fact, 
Hold that one up to the camera. That looks exactly like my letter opener. It is yours. What? How'd you get it? I told you, I burgled it. You came to my house and stole my letter opener. No, I didn't go to your house. I'm a virtual burglar. You stole it through my computer? Yeah, sorry. I don't believe you are, and I don't believe you stole it through my computer. Well, why not? Because that's impossible! Well, why do you say that? Because there's no such thing as a ver- Wait a minute, where's my pen? Is this it? Yes, what? I virtually burgled it. Sorry. You keep saying you're sorry, but you keep doing it. I'm bored. Is that why you steal? You're bored? No, no. Burglary started a long time ago when I was little. I stole all my friends' toys. Bobby Richmond's. Do you realize that stealing hurts other people? Oh, yes. When I first stole Bobby's toys, he cried and cried. And I pretended like I didn't know anything about it, but I felt terrible. It just ate me up inside. But I was too scared to confess, so instead of returning the toys, I stole some more. That's awful! I know, but after a while I stopped feeling guilty. I became a full-time thief, and now I've branched out into virtual burglary. I know it hurts people, but I just don't seem to care. Hey, where's my water? <laughs> Sorry. <sighs> I'm bored. Maybe you should get caught and have to pay for your crimes. I have, many times, and that's boring too. You keep saying that, but why are you so bored? The movies make being a thief look glamorous, but in real life it's boring. It doesn't seem like it would be boring. The thrill of planning the heist, the excitement of anticipating the moment, the exhilaration of the risk of being caught, the adventure of getting away with it, and the pleasure of your loot. I see you watch movies too. To tell you the truth, I don't feel anything. No thrill, no excitement, no exhilaration, no adventure, and certainly no pleasure. I wish I could go back to when I was a stupid kid again and feel this guilt of stealing Bobby's toys. You want to feel guilty? Well, it's better than feeling nothing. I just realized something. You have the exact same condition on my, as my arm. Only on its inside. I'll be back. Do you see this? Is that lemonade? Yes. I want to open a lemonade stand, but check this out. It's not bad, but it's a bit weak. Weak lemonade, huh? That's not good. Exactly. Now watch. Still weak. It tastes exactly the same. Well, how many? It's unbelievable. Would you buy weak lemonade? No. Well, at least not twice. Me either. Again? Practice makes perfect. Of course. Ugh. Weak. 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 Excuse me, but I couldn't help but notice that you keep mixing the same amount of lemonade powder with the same amount of water each time. Well, two scoops. That's what it says on the package. Perhaps the people who came up with the portions were envisioning a smaller cup. The instructions didn't say anything about that. Maybe not, but you can't just keep doing the exact... Look, is this the complaint department or not? Virtual complaint department? Then help me with my complaint! Are you using the same amount of water? Of course. Two scoops of lemonade powder? No more, no less. It's going to be too watery. Even though I use the exact same ingredients, I expect the results to be different 
every time. Ugh, it tastes the same. Weak. You can't just do the exact same thing over and over again and expect a different result. The people in Washington do. Listen, there's something I've got to take care of. Could you watch the complaints department for just a minute? You've got to help me. I got this song stuck in my head and it won't get out. I can't work. I can't sleep. I can't eat. I won't, can't do anything and it won't stop. Isn't that how Beethoven went insane? Beethoven didn't go insane? Sure he did. Jason Beethoven, he lived down the street from me. It was a heavy metal screamo song called Chicken with His Head Cut Off. He couldn't get it out of his head. But in his mind, he only heard it played by the banjo. They had to take him away in a straitjacket. This is the complaint department, isn't it? Virtual complaint department. And new today, we also sell lemonade. Virtually, of course. You're not being very helpful. I'm desperate. I need sleep. And the song just keeps playing over and over again. Sorry. Have you tried eating bananas? Yes. They only pop up in the song. May I ask what song is running through your head? Old MacDonald. You don't mean Old MacDonald had a farm. E-I-E-I-O. And on that farm he had a banana. E-I-E-I-O. Oh dear. This is awful. Have you tried counting sheep? With a ba-ba here and a ba-ba there. So everything you try ends up in the song? This is worse than chicken with his head cut off. Here a bop, there a bop, everywhere a bop, bop. Help me! You could order some lemonade. No thanks. It looks weak. With the weak, weak here and a weak, weak there. That's an obnoxious song. Sing something else. Here, sing with me. Rudolph the red-nosed reindeer had a very shiny nose. And if you ever saw it, you would even say it glows. Here a glow, there a glow, everywhere a glow, glow, old Meg Rudolph had a... What? See? It's impossible! I hate that song! Let's sing something else! Uh... Uh, Hey Jude by the Beatles. Ready? One, two, three. Old MacDonald had a farm. E-I-E-I. Ah. Uh. No. This can't be. Uh, Do She Get Off by Taylor Swift. Ready? Go. And on that farm he had a shake. E-I-E-I. Oh. What? Um... Try when the saints go marching in. Go! With a march, march here and a march, march there. What? <laughs> e -I -E -I. <laughs> Let me out of here! <laughs> it's the complaint department. Absolutely. Do you have a complaint? I most certainly do. First, I woke up to absolute silence. Usually, Mrs. Wildby's dog is yapping at the wee hours in the morning, waking up me and the whole neighborhood. I mean, who gets up before 9 a.m. anyway? And it's one of those annoying little dogs with those high wanted box. But this morning, there was nothing. So you were able to sleep in? I'd hardly call 9 10 a.m. sleeping in. Then I go out to get the paper, which is usually thrown in the rose bushes. But this morning, it was sitting right on my doorstep. I didn't even have to put on my slippers to go get it. So that was a good thing. What do you think? But while I was getting the paper, I noticed that the neighbors across the street had taken down their pool. Swimming pool? Yes. They have this little two-foot blow-up swimming pool in their front yard, but they have no fence around it, and the city ordinance clearly states 
that any pool over 18 inches must be enclosed by a six-foot fence. I've called the city several times to report the violation, but they never do anything about it. But the pool is gone now. Yes. I was gonna call the city again today, but I figured there was no point. But that's not all. For lunch, I decided to go to Taco Bell. You don't seem like the kind of person who would frequent the bell. No, but I do like fried chicken. And when I went to my favorite fried, chick fried chicken place, they had combined it with a Taco Bell. But the problem was, is that I tried a few menus, and I was instantly hooked. But they kept getting my order wrong. Not enough cheese on my taco, too much fizz in my Diet Pepsi, not enough crunch in my burrito. I mean, what are the odds that they get it wrong every time? But today, everything was perfect. So the bell came through for you. That's not all. The doctor called and said my cholesterol plummeted, and I don't even need to take those stupid pills anymore. My financial portfolio went from weak to strong. My taxes went down. And on the way over here, all the traffic lights were green. Sorry, let me get this straight. You got online to the complaint department to not have anything to complain about? I don't know why I clicked that link. I just liked how it looked. It was very pretty. You think the link to the virtual complaint department is pretty? It's my favorite link. Well, then I'm afraid you're all out of excuses. Excuses for what? Hey, how would you like to run the complaint department? Me? It'd just be a few minutes until I get back. Yes. Yes, I'll do it. All right, here's what you do. Shut up. I don't need to know how to do the job. I was born ready for it. Welcome to the Virtual Complaint Department. How may I help you? Welcome to the Virtual Complaint Department. How may I help you? N yes, no, n no, thank you. I shouldn't be here. I'll leave. Wait, wait. You came here to say something. You might as well lay it on me. Actually, I work at another Virtual Complaint Department on another site. Today is my day off. Ah, a fellow fellow complaint receptacle. Let me ask you something. Are you sick and tired of all these people coming to complain about the stupidest things? Yes, yes, that's, that's why I'm here. For example, I had this lady come in yesterday to complain that every morning her husband wakes up and stretches his arms and says, ah, I slept like a baby. What's wrong with that? That's what I asked her. So she says, he doesn't remember that we had babies. They don't sleep that well. So what did you say? I told her to just be grateful that he doesn't wake up hungry and crying every two hours with a load in his pants. A very good point. I thought so, but she closed her screen all angry. And then there's this guy who gets on one of those gets gets on with one of those sticky fly ugh, sticky fly strips wrapped around all his head, and he can't get it off. I mean. Is it me? Is it I? What? I believe the proper grammatical form of that sentence would be, is it I? Are you sure? What if I added just, like, the word just into it? Is it just me? I mean, people say that all the time. But I've never heard anyone say, is it just I? You're right. That does sound weird. Let's see. You use I for the subject of the sentence, like... I am listening to a complaint, and me for the object of the sentence, like, uh, this person is complaining to me. Yes, you would say, this person is complaining to I. So, is I the subject of our question? Is it I, or is it the subject of the question? <sighs> you know, I'm not too sure, but I am sure that I've heard the phrase, is it I, somewhere before. Now that you mention it, I believe I've heard it put that way before, too. Well, no matter. Whether it's, is it me or is it I, it's a rather good question. I wish my customers would ask it, 
before they come to my complaint department. Wouldn't that be something? It would change the whole way we do things around here. It might even change the world. Come to think of it, we better not spread it around. If that happened, we'd be out of a job. <laughs> right? Mum's the word. Hey, you're an experienced complaint taker. I was wondering if you could do me a favor. It would only take a sec. Sure. What is it? Could you... Wait. Maybe it is me. No, I think you're right. It is. Is it I? No. I mean the problem. Maybe the problem is me. What problem? You know what? Never mind. I was going to ask you to watch the complaint department while I took a break, but... Eh, I think I'll stay. Yes, I'm going to stay at my post. <sighs> it's it's not really my day off. I asked someone to watch my complaint department, department for me while I came here. I can't believe I couldn't see it before. It is me. Or I. I've got to get back. See ya. Have a nice day. Here you are. This certificate grants the holder the right to be happy for the whole day. I'll email it to you. No more excuses. Thank you. What about tomorrow? Worry about that when you come to it. I've got it. Sing with me. Old MacDonald had a farm. E-I-E-I-O. And on that farm, he had a grievance. E-I-E-I-O. With a grumble. grumble. And a mumble there. Here a moan. They were grown. Everywhere a murmur zone. Old MacDonald had a farm. E-I-E-I-O. Well? It's gone. It's completely gone. We just needed to finish the song. Thank you. Thank you. This is wonderful. Goodbye. Hey, check this out. Ooh, delicious. I gotta try that. It's wonderful. You doubled the amount of lemonade powder. Wait till my customers taste this flavor explosion. What? You know what? <sighs> Sorry. Here, I found Bobby Richmond's phone number. You gotta start somewhere. You're right. Thank you. There you are. I called the paramedics. They're waiting for you outside your house. Will they give me something for the pain in my arm? I hope not. You need that pain, but they're going to fix both your arms. Excellent. Thank you. I found the solution to your problem. And how is Ping Pong supposed to get my parents to bake my cakes and wash my dishes? Simple. Get a paddle, just like this, or bigger, or maybe something with spikes on it. If you're going to say that I should go get a low-level entry job, let me just tell you what I told my parents. I went to college. I got an associate's degree in female Klingon studies. I'm not going to work on an assembly line. Nope. Just give the paddle to your parents, and then tell them to give you a good spanking. What? You can't talk to me like that. You're a self aggrandizing pompous parasite who thinks that the principles of responsibility and consequences apply to everyone but you. Now it's time to grow up and stop acting like a baby. I hate you. You're ruining my life. Thanks for watching the complaint department. How did it go? Uh, pretty good. Hey, what time does the complaint department close? Six. O'clock? Yes, six o'clock. 
Okay, I'll come back then. Why? We'll be closed. Bye. I'd say you worked off your bill. Ooh, what have you got there? Creamy Havarti. It's on sale, you know. Oh, it looks wonderful. I must purchase some. I hope they've updated their sale prices, or I'll be back. I know you will. All right, I've got a solution. Roll up a regular sheet of paper into a cone, like this. Like this? Perfect. Now put the skinny end in the in your ear and see if your husband answers you now. It's only temporary. You'll need to see a doctor. Of course. To think all this time the problem was me. Or is it I? Either one works. Oh my goodness. My husband is calling me. I didn't hear your phone ring. He's in the living room searching for me. I better get going. Thank you. Wow! Oh, how awful. Oh, no, no. I already told you. I want someone else. Excuse me. Oh, I'm extremely sorry. I thought you were someone else. I am most definitely not someone else. As you can see, I am an entirely different person. I guess the problem was, wasn't was someone else. Good day. I have good news. The power is back on in your neighborhood. Ah, so I'll be able to see behind the dresser to make sure the big cord is flooding to the wall. Actually, you won't need your TV. It should work perfectly fine now. Why? Because the power came back? Oh, suddenly, I feel humiliated. That's the first step to recovery. Hey! I bet I know when the clock stopped running. Now what am I supposed to do with you? I have the answer. Take a look. It's a bag full of empty halves of Oreos. Wow, that's perfect! Now you can spread your icing back onto these cookies in just the right proportions. Excellent, but how do I, I, I mean, me being here and you being there? Oh, I didn't think about that. I normally work at the non-virtual complaint department. They have lemonade there, too. I guess you'll have to buy another package of Oreos and scrape the icing off yourself. Then you can spread it back onto the empty cookies. Thank you. I'm off to the store. I've got a lot of cookies to repair. I'm back. Oh, you got your Diet Pepsi, I see. Yeah, I'd offer you one too, but you're not here. That's okay. Diet Pepsi hurts my back. How's that? Hurts your back? When I take a drink of it, I have to bend over so far to lick the dirt off of my shoes just to get the awful taste out of my mouth. <laughs> okay, I see. So, how did everything go? Fairly well, I suppose. I learned a lot about people. Let me guess. It's easy to see the solution to someone else's complaint, but when it comes to our own problems... Well, yes. That's one thing, but in the bigger picture... Oh, hey! I just realized you never got to tell me your complaint. That's okay. I don't need to. No, you came here for a reason, and then you were kind enough to do me a good turn. The least I can do is hear your complaint. Actually, now that I've had time to think about it, it was I. It was me. You had nothing to do with it? No, no, I mean the proper way to say it was, is, it was me. Are you sure? Is it me? Is it I? Is it me? Is it, I can't tell which one sounds better, but I'm sure I've heard the question, is it I, before. Well, now that you mention it, I believe I've heard it put that way as well. Somewhere important, I believe. No matter. Either way, it's a good question which has caused me to look inward. I shall ask it frequently. Thank you for the experience. Cheers. Cheers.